I'm Dr. Walters, and I would like to welcome you to this brief podcast, Integrating Gender into Sociological Theorizing. Many contemporary sociologists have commented on the way in which courses in sociological theory typically focus on the work of white males, perpetuating the institutional marginalization of women and minorities in the profession of sociology. This version of SOS 310 seeks to overturn this long tradition, that is, to integrate race, class, and gender with mainstream and traditional theories and theorizing. Here, we also focus, or change the focus, from a noun to a verb, that is, from theory to theorizing, thus emphasizing theory as an activity. This week, your main reading is Cynthia Epstein's American Sociological Association Presidential Address, published in 2006, coupled with a textbook chapter on feminist theory by Patricia Longerman and Jill Nobrugi, plus some data sources on the status of women. But throughout the course, you will be studying a diverse array of theorists who works have contributed significantly to the sociological theoretical arsenal, theorists who are diverse in every sense of the term. Gender inequality has been around for a long time, and we have been studying it for a very long time. Epstein, actually a second wave feminist, notes that gender analyses have tended to be ghettoized. Thus, it is recommended that all sociologists consider integrating gender issues into their studies to better understand the major institutions and social relationships in society. Epstein has incorporated a number of major sociological concepts into her address, concepts that you may have studied in Introduction to Sociology, role, status, social structure, institutions, self-fulfilling prophecy, deconstruction, social speciation, mindscape, and Epstein uses them fluently. Be sure to circle them as you read and use them in your communications. Epstein couples sex division or gender division with subordination. She notes that other dichotomous social categories race and ethnicity, for example, have faced deconstruction. When this has happened with gender, gender studies becomes ghettoized. Nonetheless, gender is the most basic and most resistant to change of all dichotomous social categories. Sex categories are marked are markers around which all other institutions and institutional functions are organized. And gender is thus a master status or one that dominates all other statuses. Again, to clarify that when the dichotomous nature of the social categorization of gender becomes deconstructed and expanded, as has been the case with race and ethnicity, those studies have tended to become marginalized or ghettoized. In the folder, you will also find important links with data, including the UN Millennium Development Goals, which include goals for women and children, and the Gender Inequality Index, which measures inequality in three major aspects of human development, reproductive health, empowerment, and economic status. These are sites to which you will want to return throughout the course and actually throughout your studies in sociology. Sex division is typically coupled with sex subordination. Males and females' actual symbolic roles in the social structure are a seedbed for group formation and group boundary maintenance, and these activities typically involve subordination. You can observe this at 
home, at school, and work in the cafeteria or at the dinner table. All societies and large institutions are rooted in the differentiation and subordination of females. The more group solidarities are in question in a society, the stronger the differentiation between males and females, and the more severe is women's subjugation. This week, September 3rd, 2014, you can see this on the front page of the paper or on the news every day. Finally, gender inequality is persistent. In sociology, findings of scholarship on women have not been integrated with the profession's major theoretical and empirical foci. Generally, the denigration and segregation of women reinforces male bonds and their institutions and their institutional hierarchies. Mommy tracks designed to help women have actually resulted in stalled careers. Inequality in the workplace is reinforced by inequality in education. You can see this most clearly globally, but if you take a close look under the microscope in the United States, what you will see is that the larger number of women and the educational institutions of higher education result from women returning to school, not women starting school on the same track as women or in the same, in the same way. Brutal examples of global inequality exist in many lesser developed countries. Mindscapes is a term developed by Viator Zerubavl, and it refers to the way in which our cognitive framework incorporates a kind of taken-for-granted world that sits in the background and is unlikely to be questioned. Our mindscapes legitimate household authority and community leaders that are largely gender stratified. So I hope you enjoyed this, the reading this week and that this sets a tone or a pace for our future investigations into sociological theory and our use of sociological theory.